Well, we are indeed uh, fearfully and wonderfully made, as the psalmist tells us. Uh, some speakers uh, invite uh, questions during the course of the presentation, and others would rather have you wait with your questions until the end. I just thought I would open up right at the beginning with questions. And uh, I think I know what the question might be. <laughs> when does life begin? Huh? Wouldn't that come up? Already today I've been asked that I think a couple of times. That's really not what we meant, is it? When does life itself begin? I think what we're really asking is when does human life begin or when does a human begin or to really put a fine point on it, I like to ask when does a person, when does a person begin? Well, the scriptures do have something to say about that. A person begins very early, even before the worlds were formed, the Bible tells us. Here in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 5, we learn uh, about the prophet Jeremiah. God says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Wow, we can't go there, can we? That's too deep for us. Uh, what can we maybe look at that's a little more understandable? I would argue that uh, human life began on the sixth day of, of creation. In a sense, is that not true? Adam and Eve were created, and they begat children, and their children begat children, and so it has been up to the present. You know, one of the basic axioms of science is that all life comes from previously existing life. We don't know of any exceptions. People come from previously existing people, and it's been so since Adam and Eve. So in that sense, life goes back to the sixth day of creation. But there is a way we can focus at a level that we come closer to understanding of when in the womb can we point to something and say, uh, that's a new human life. And that's one of the things we're going to be, I think, uh, discussing here. Well, let's uh, look at Psalm 139. That's where I got the, the title for this lecture. Uh, there the psalmist tells us, uh, speaking of God, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Isn't it kind of interesting to think of God doing some knitting here? <laughs> Elsewhere in scripture we read about weaving. In fact, knitting and weaving is a pretty common expression of what God is doing in the womb. You know, it's interesting. Our bodies really are knit and woven. My, my field of expertise when I taught at Washington University School of Medicine uh, is a field called histology. And that comes from a Greek word, histos, that means fabric or web. When people began to look through microscopes, light microscopes, and later electron microscopes, they noticed that the bodies and the tissues of the bodies are indeed woven. Just as the psalmist said, you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. And then it goes on to say, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. That's why God deserves our praise. We are fearfully and wonderfully made by him. And then I like this last expression, your works are wonderful. And I know that full well. Every time I read it, I think, your works are wonderful, and that's like a no-brainer. I mean, it's just plain obvious. Well, I hope you'll see that it's pretty obvious as we uh, explore the early development uh, of our body. But it helps to think of God as knitting and weaving. Uh, you know, when we talk about abortion, I kind of think of it as going in and God is knitting away and we kind of snitch that knitting away from him. I don't recommend it. And yet I would say, if anyone has had an abortion, God is forgiving. He's forgiven me for his bad and worse, so he'll forgive you too. He does tell us, go and sin no more. It says, my frame was not hidden from you. That is, our body as it was being formed in the womb was not hidden from God. When I was made in the secret place, that's kind of a euphemism for the womb. Today we know quite a bit about the womb and we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, but when this was written, while God of course knew everything about the womb, uh, those who read it knew less about it than we do today. And so uh, they referred to it as the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth. That's another euphemism for the womb, the depths of the earth. In fact, some of the commentators have said that uh, 
people understood that life sort of popped into existence from non-life, from sort of death to life, and uh, this secret place and depths of the earth was sort of another expression for the grave. But people have known, of course, for a very long time that something is going on in that womb of the mother where the baby develops progressively. And then this last section is so important. Speaking of God again, it said, your eyes saw my unformed body. Think about it. That means that while the baby's developing in the womb, God is looking on. So he's watching and he's playing an active role described as knitting and weaving. And then this last expression, I don't pretend to understand it. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before any one of them came to be. Before we begin, I always like to begin with Ecclesiastes, before we get into the science. You know, I spent a number of years as, as a professor at a medical school, and you can get a big head doing that kind of thing. Why, there was a period of time when I would walk through my office doors and my ears would drag in the door frame. Everybody, doctor this, doctor that. And I would have to read the book of Ecclesiastes at least once or twice a year just to kind of get the, the wind out of the bag. <laughs> and uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, it tells us about uh, the development of the baby in the womb, and it says, As you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. Well, what a way to begin. We're told we're not going to understand. This is the same fellow that says there's nothing new under the sun. Of the making of books, there is no end. With much study is wearisome of the flesh, and with much learning comes much grief. Well, he doesn't hold out much for the academic, does he? And tells us we're not going to learn a whole lot about the development of the baby in the womb, but we'll learn something. We'll, we'll learn something, but nowhere near what could be known, of course. Well, there it is. That's the uterus. Sometimes call it the womb, a muscular organ, perhaps the size of your fist, a little smaller. Sets down low in the body, way down in the pelvis kind of leans forward like this. It's held in position by a broad ligament on each side of the uterus. That ligament has been given an interesting name. It's called the uh, broad uh, ligament. I'm not going too fast, am I? I didn't think so, no. And over here we see ovaries on either side and they're held in position with a ligament that is round in cross-section. And of course it's called the round ligament. You can see there's nothing to be afraid of here with the technical language. Everything will be above board. Well, it's within the uterus that the baby will develop, but that's getting ahead of the story. On either side of the uterus is a tube. This tube conducts an egg down to the uterus. It's called the egg tube or the uterine tube. And at the end of the tube on either side is an expansion shaped like a funnel. And I hope I don't have to tell you at this point, it's called the funnel, only the Latin name for it is infundibulum. And that funnel is going to catch the egg once it's released from the ovary. So we have an ovary on either side. These ovaries are about the size of an almond nut. Uh, that's without the shell. You got the picture of an almond nut, you can see it easily with your eye. And uh, each ovary can release eggs. Uh, and when they are released, they will be caught by this little funnel and will pass down this tube towards the uterus. That whole pass down the tube is going to take about a week. And I hope this lecture doesn't take a week, but we're going to mainly talk about the events happening during that week.